Welcome to the Master's House. How many here really know that the Lord loves them? How many know that He'll reach out and He'll reach out and He'll reach out unto you? Amen? He loves you that much. And uh, so I was a little nervous about this message. I've been a lot nervous, let's say. It's just. Like it is, I'm a lot nervous. And, uh, you know, wanting the Lord's perfect will, His perfect way and every, every right, right word, every right thought. And uh, so today, it's not only a message about how good God is, but it's a message of warning. Praise the Lord. How many here like a little bit of warning sometimes? You know, the righteous embrace the warning. The wicked, maybe not so much. But the righteous, hey, go ahead. Go ahead and warn me. How many want to know what's coming? Give me a little heads up. Well, thank the Lord that he does. Send his messengers. In Isaiah 62... For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteous thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Today we're not going to hold our peace. I'm not going to hold my peace. And the Gentiles shall see the righteousness and all the kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. And thou shalt be a crown of glory into the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt not no more be termed forsaken, neither shalt thou shall thy land be more termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hepaziba, which I believe is Hezekiah's wife. And thy land Beulah, and the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee, and thy bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride. So shall God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon the walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent, and give him no rest, till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. How many are thankful for the watchmen? Are you thankful for our pastor? Yes. Let's give him a hand. Are you thankful for these great men back here that's standing in his place that are watchmen on the walls? It's important that there be a watchman on the wall. And it's important that I heed their call, Amen. It's, it's real important. They're on the watchtower and they can see the enemy. We're all in the sheepfold, inside the fold, inside the walls. But God has placed watchmen up on that wall to see the enemy, to see the wolves that would come in. And thank God for these men. Keep not silent. And give him no rest till he establish, till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And the Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. Praise the Lord. And the sons of the stranger shall, no, shall not drink wine for that which thou hast labored, but they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And they have brought it together, shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up the standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed until the end of the world, say ye to the daughter of Zion, behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, 
His reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people. Amen. Amen. They shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Praise the Lord. How many want to be that city? Amen. 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 To be that city. You know, that word of warning comes from these watchmen. And today, I want to, uh, you know, didn't Brother Thomas do a great job? Didn't he do a fabulous job? An amazing job? Let's give him a hand. Let's give the Lord a hand for what he did. He gave us that warning. And how many here did heed it? There is an enemy. And I, like I told them I was going to quote him. And I, I really am going to quote him a lot. And hopefully I get it somewhat right. But there is an enemy that set a siege around. And only by the watchman will we know the danger that lies before us. It is then that will give us the warning. And it's up to me to heed it. And Lord, I was thinking, Lord, it was a great service Sunday, last Sunday. To me, it was like it was yesterday because I've been thinking on it all week. Lord, it was a great move of your spirit. Lord, did we not all heed the warning of the enemy that is banging on each and every door, that has come to weary the saints, Do we not heed that warning? And I didn't get an answer, in case you were wondering. Other than, you know, maybe I didn't take it quite to heart as much as I should. And maybe it's just for one or for two. But Lord, let me take heed to the watchman today and take heed to that message. If I can see the wolf... If I could see the enemy, then what need is there of a watchman? But I need them because they can give me the warning in time. I need them that much. You think, well, what are you doing? Just here to build up all the ministry team? I'm here to say how important that word of warning comes across. And I can either grab hold of it and hold it close to my heart and know that the enemy is fighting against me, and I can go home, and I could take my spouse's hand, and I could pray and ask God, and God didn't move. Or I could leave that Sunday, and, oh, it was just another great message, contend for the faith, and not give heed that I better be praying. I better be seeking God. I better be on my knees. And asking God for his perfect will, for his strength, that he be with me, that he go before me. Amen? Because how many know that if he goes before you, there is nothing that shall stand against you? The key is, have you allowed him to go before you? Have I allowed him? Have I got down on my knees? Did I come down to this altar and ask him, Lord, you go before me. Lord, you help me fight this fight. Was it, did I take it seriously? Did I take the cry of the watchman and take it to heart, grab a hold of it? Because it's a message of warning because I might die if I don't. Ezekiel 3, 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give warning for me, from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when the righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, listen to this, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. 
and but his blood will I require at thy hand. All the righteousness that I think I may have accomplished in this life, all the good things I think I did that were right in the sight of God, if I didn't heed that warning and I, I slipped back, I stumbled back, I got trapped in iniquity, I got trapped in sin, and I didn't heed that warning. That right, and I die from it. All that righteousness will not be remembered. All those good things. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live. Praise the Lord. How many want to be that man? Oh, I want to be that man. That means, you know what, that warning that comes across this holy desk saves your life. It saves my life. Keeps me from Aaron. Keeps me, oh man. I was, I was a did a bonehead mistake. And uh, thank goodness for Brother Thomas. Thank goodness for Brother Don and our pastor got up here and said that word. It's going to save my life. These words are life. These words that are from God are life. They save your soul. They can save it. If I will but heed to them. If I will but heed that the enemy has been browbeaten and browbeaten and browbeaten. And except I pray continuously, as Brother Thomas said, except I come down here and I start fighting, not as one that beateth the air. I'm not going to win. I might die from that, from the attack of the enemy. Because I didn't heed the warning. The Lord, hey, I thought the Lord was going to be with me. He sent a message of warning to the righteous. Will I listen to it? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 2.15 for we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved and in them that perish. To one we are a savor, a savor of death unto death, and to the other a savor of life unto life. What is that savor to you today? Savor of death unto death or savor of life unto life? Oh, I, I want to drink it in. I want to drink it in. Warn me all day long. Warn me all day long. 1 Timothy 4.16 Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in then. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And this is Paul talking to Timothy. Thou shalt save thyself and those that hear. Hebrews 13.7 I'm going to be short today. I'm almost done. It's quick. Hebrews 13.7 13, 17, Sorry. Obey them that rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. Can you believe that? Yeah. Obey them that rule over you and submit yourselves the Lord. Yeah. To, to what? To, to a man, to a pastor, to a, to a God-appointed servant? This is a human being. I'm not going to submit myself. Well, that's what uh, Paul said. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they must give account that they do it with joy and not with grief, for that it is unpro unprofitable for you. In John 10, 11, For I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Thank the Lord. Amen. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. That's what the devil's plan is. To separate. Just to separate. I watched uh, Brother Corbett's Wednesday Bible study. All he wants to do is just pick one off. Just go. Don't listen to that warning. Don't listen to that warning to unite together and be as one body. 
Don't listen to that. Oh, it's just another one. You know, love your brother, love your sister. It's all good. Just, you know, do your best and be kind. It's a message of warning. If we don't love our brother and sister, if we allow the attack of the enemy, the wolf that's in our mind, the, the lie that come in and separate me, I could be lost. I could be lost. Why does it say contend for the faith? Because maybe if I don't fight, I could lose my faith if I don't start fighting for it. It's not a once saved, always saved. I could fall back and lose. But thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for a message of warning, amen? You still with me? Thank the Lord that I could be like, oh, man, I can't believe I let that doubt and that fear grip a hold of me. I can't believe I let that thought of being angry to my brother get a hold of me. And thank goodness Brother Thomas got up here and said that I needed to fight for it. Thank goodness he told me to go home and pray and seek God's face. And you pray and you pray because that is your weapon. Thank goodness he told me to come up here to this altar and fight for the victory. Thank goodness for that message, if I heeded to it, if I said, oh, oh, man, I was wrong. Oh, man, I messed up. Oh, man, I got tripped up. Whatever the case, it doesn't matter. All that matters is you heed to it. All that matters is you obey to it. All that matters is you submit to it. Oh, but, uh, you know, you got this circumstance. Oh, uh, I, don't like, I don't like Brother Garrett because, you know, every time I wear this suit, it's sad. Let's, let me break talk. Let me break. Every time I wear the suit and they put that picture of me up on the board, up on the screen, and I'm wearing this suit, I think, I've got to get another suit. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to. I've got to. I'm wearing the same suit that's been up on the screen for months and months. Brother Garrett's wearing the same suit. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of it. Don't let that beat you down. Don't let that discourage you. Keep fighting. This is the message of warning to you to let that go. Because you can. Because God wants to be with you. God wants to fight for you. But you got to listen to his messenger that he sends. You got to listen to these great men back here. You got to listen to our pastor. I can't just take it as another great, oh, that's a great sermon on the Sunday. I go home and, oh, I feel great. Brother Thomas said that the enemy has set siege has encamped, has come to attack. He wants to, oh, he wants to destroy you. You think he left? He may have for some because he got the victory. But he's going to come again. But how many here think, oh, you know what I remember? I remember the watchman, and I remember the cry that he made on the watchtower. He saw him coming. He said, all right, people, it's coming. We better gear up. We better get our boxing gloves on. That doesn't say like, oh, you know, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. No, I should because it's life and death. Where did I stop? John 10, 11. The, the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and knoweth my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Praise the Lord. Lord. And I'll read this scripture again that that Brother Thomas read. Jude 1.3 Beloved, when I gave all diligence, diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write to you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. You know, he said, it was needful for me to write unto you. I'm not going to take on, and almost, I've almost requoted all Brother Thomas's sermon, but Jude's saying, it was needful for me. Yeah. I needed to come tell you. Yeah. Every time the word of God goes forward, it was needful. It's going to save your life if you can grab a hold of to it. If you could take it home with you and be like, yes. And guess what? 
I did. Thank the Lord. I was, oh man, thank goodness. Brother Thomas got up here. Lord, thank goodness you gave him that word. And I went home. And me and my wife, we have prayed more together this week than we ever have before. And the victory, you could feel the victory. You could feel the victory before the amen was said. That's how great it was. That's how, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, it is God's word. If I would take it to heart. It's not like, ah, oh, maybe I should go pray. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should go find my closet of prayer. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should come to this altar. Ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. There's always next week, right? How important is the watchman on the wall? How important is he? I, he's got the advantage point, amen? Isn't he in the watchtower? He can see out there. I, got a, I, can, I may have a big wall in front of me. But he can see. He can see out there. You know, the, the word that, that I feel that God laid on my heart uh, for this Sunday was, he said, this is your family, protect them. This is your family, protect them. And I was, you know, me, I'm like, Lord, I, you know, whatever, I'll just do whatever you say. But Lord, I have no idea where you want me to go with that. I could just go up there and say that. This is, my, this is your family. Protect them. But Lord, I don't know. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? He says, you get up on that watchtower and you cry, warning, warning, warning. That is, that is our protection. Thank goodness I have that. Thank goodness I have God called men to say, hey, warning, warning. Whatever, whoever this is for, if it's for all, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because I'm going to heed to it anyways. Lord, if it's not for me, I don't care. I'm going to heed to it anyways. And I'm going to follow after it. He said, this is my family. You think, just as the Lord told uh, those that were gathered around, said, hey, your mom wants to talk to you. He said, no. He pointed over to his disciples said, no, this is my family. This is my family of faith. Protect them. Protect them. There are things coming our way that if we don't learn and learn to heed a simple word of warning that may be to pray, that may be to fast, how am I going to heed some of the more difficult tasks, if you will? How am I going to say, oh, yep, I'm going to go home and do it. This week, I'm going to do it. The watchman was there for their protection. They are the ones that don't sleep. They are the ones because they are that concerned. It's up to you and I to heed them. Amen? To heed those words. How many here is going to heed them today? If you do, we already said it, the Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Because you listened to that messenger. You listened to that heat of warning. There is no enemy that is encamped around about you. There is no uh, fight that you're going through that you will not get the victory over. Because there is nothing that shall stand against you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Shall we stand?